those of you who remember the Rav's Motzei Shabbos shiur uh, may, may, may remember that the shiur is to start at age 15 promptly. And, and I always wondered why. And Rabbi Cohen Zechron Levracha once told me that in the, in, 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 in the University of Berlin in Friedrich Wilhelm, classes were called for the hour and they started punctually 15 minutes later. So that was the svar. That was the svar. Um, I just went away from Baruch. So we go? Okay. All right, thank you for coming. Uh, that it required not a small amount of Messiris Nefesh to uh, brave, the, uh, brave the elements, which is sort of a cognitively dissonant statement to make uh, in, the, in, the, in the middle of April. Uh, I assume there are no accountants in the room because uh, another three days is a season. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank Rabbi Baruch Kelman for making all the arrangements and for doing an amazingly yeoman's job for putting together this year and reaching out to uh, all of the uh, various other organizations that uh, that did the um, that did the uh, did the work uh, that that announced the shear as well. Um, I uh, would the shear is uh, dedicated, to, of course, to the. Uh, Lilu Nishmas, Moreno Verabenu, Rabban Shel Kol Bnei Agola, Harav Agon, Rabbi Yosef Dovah Levi Soloveitchik, Zecher Tzadik Levracha, whose yortzeit was Yudches uh, Yudches Nisan. Nevertheless, it would be uh, I would be very much amiss if I did not note as well that f since everything everybody everybody knows one thing in Israel, and that's there were no coincidences that the Rav's yortzeit fell uh, the Rav passed away on the exact same day as. Uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Belkin, the uh, president of Yeshiva, who built Yeshiva into uh, an amazing empire and uh, basically provided the context within which the Rav could uh, thrive and could be uh, reach his full uh, his full stature. So that, um, in an equal in an equal sense, these um, my comments are uh, in his uh, in his acknowledgement of his memory uh, as well. Um, before we before Eder Reiden will solve the proverbial, before uh, getting down to the uh, to the topic of the shear itself, um, I'd like to uh, I'd like I have to express my uh, my sense of sort of hinani haani mimas. Um, others far greater than I have uh, had the opportunity to uh, to uh, devote the shiurim to uh, uh, to the rav, and um, I. Uh, Hope that perhaps I can add some kind of angle which uh, has not been uh, has not been discussed or is discussed less than than, than usual. Uh, my story with the Rav, my history with the Rav, is somewhat unusual um, because my own personal path was uh, uh, somewhat unusual. I was not born into an Orthodox family. I was born into a very traditional conservative family. Uh, over the course of my early teens, uh, I grew in had the opportunity to grow in uh, in uh, Shmir Smitzvahs and to. Uh, be introduced to Shari Talmud Torah. Those of you from Boston uh, will remember fondly the two people who uh, basically introduced me to Talmud Torah uh, in what in this way, that way, the other way. And those who were Rabbi Aaron Vider, Zichron Levrach, who passed away last year, and um, Rabbi, and more importantly in this regard, uh, Rabbi Isaiah Wolgamot Zichron Levracha. Uh, when I was 18 years old, uh, I was at the I was ready to take an, another step, and again there were no. Uh, there were no uh, coincidences, and I had the schus of being the student of Rabbi David Shapiro, and uh, who was moonlighting at Hebrew College at the time. But that's okay; we all moonlight at some stage of our lives. Um, and when I asked him after a class once, um, "What can I do to learn for the summer?" Uh, Rabbi Shapiro suggested that I go learn by the Rav, which I thought was an incredibly sort of presumptuous act on my part. But he, um, but he saw to it, together with Rabbi Wolgamuth, that the Rav allowed me to join his shiurim. Uh, that was in the summer of 1973. And the minute I walked into the old by my modernist based Madrash Jane, I was just talking about this the other day, it's intimacy and, and small room. Um, my life was transformed. This is before I'd read Lelui Men of Faith, the Risha Halacha. I was coming just to learn Teira. And when you walked into the shir, when I walked into the shir, um, I, again, so my words, I'm supposed to be a wordsmith, but uh, my words fail me. The, the experience of being in another dimension of time and space with the Rav changed my life for all time. Um, my uh, my uh, personal motto in that regard is, Yosef uh, Enenu Vana Ana Ana Niba. 
Um, there's not a day, there's not a moment that over, that from that day on and for the 90 years out, afterwards I had exclusive learning with the Rav in Boston, and then subsequently in the four and a half years I was in yeshiva um, with him that um, he was the only Rebbe I ever had, and his impact on my life was just beyond, uh, is beyond description. Um, I would honestly, I think I can honestly say that it would have been impossible for me. Um, well, let's do it the other way. It was the Rav whose presence and whose guidance and whose interest, despite the fact that, like everybody else, I was scared to death of him, uh, but who's done the few intimate moments that we had together and also his teachings made it possible for me to be able to be a uh, Shavatar and Mitzvah, to struggle with Amuna, to live in the world and to go beyond and to try to develop something which he would constantly uh, um, emphasize, at least, uh, at least uh, when we had in our conversations, and that is to cultivate Torah in the broadest sense of the term which means transcending the narrow uh, curriculum of the yeshivas to include uh, everything and anything of what uh, I would say, would, uh, to quote Matthew Arnold, as Robert Lichtenstein has wanted to do the best that has been said and, uh, and written. So that um, I offer these uh, remarks to pass on some of the Rav's Torah on certain issues, but not to do it as an automaton, because I too was in the situation where um, I suggested something to the Rav when which I repeated uh, to him uh, something he had said a number of years older. I thought it would be Knacker, the Rav Estakash, and I remember what he said a few years ago, and he was not impressed that I could repeat what he had said before. And uh, he said um, uh, one of two things. He said, first, uh, I don't want to know what I said then. I want to know what I said now, what we say now, which we'll come back to in terms of creativity. And the other thing was, I don't, don't want to know what I said. I want to know what you said, what you say. And that desire to not create robots, but to create disciples who can stand on their own two feet, as he would often uh, point out, um, I will try to uh, do a little bit, make a small contribution in, uh, in that regard. My point of departure, if you, as you will notice from the, uh, from the, uh, from the Mikoros, uh, is, a, um, is a discussion of the um, of two passages in the Rambam, Hilchas of Zara, uh, the first, uh, for actually the, for the second halacha in the first parak, and um, we'll come back to the Mishnah Novos in a minute, and uh, also the uh, first two halachas in the uh, uh, in Hilchas Yisari, Yisari at Torah. Um, these um, the base material from which on, on which uh, that, that I'm basing the halacha this, this year on. Um, is actually, uh, or actually, it's all available. I mean, I'm not going to, I'm just not, I'm, as I said, I'm not, this is not an exercise in Nibrazogen in just saying over. But the original Shiorim are available, A, uh, online. They were uh, uploaded to the Bergen County based Medrash under Hilchus of Odezara in 1974, I think it was. Uh, and then Rabbi Shapiro again published a, uh, did you publish them or just put them online? The notes from the Shiorim on Odezara. Do you remember that you did it? Okay. They're there. Rabbi Shapiro's notes on those shiurim were actually floating around the internet. Okay, now it's a value. And, uh, and finally, uh, they were uh, epitomized in a volume called Abraham's Journey that was edited by um, Ronnie Ziegler and I think Joe Wolowski. Um, oh, no, David Schatz, sorry. David Schatz and, uh, and Ronnie Ziegler. Um, I'm going to take them in a totally different, a totally different uh, direction, I think, but let's start. The Rambam, in, the, uh, in discussing, uh, prefaces his discussions of, uh, of Avodah Zarah with a complex, nuanced, uh, and um, I also studied with Professor Tversky, so here we go, re highly repercussive um, uh, discussion, description of the origins of religion, as opposed to most, um, most the, uh, anthropologists of religion who assumed that man went from being an idolater, from being a polytheist, from being an animist, to being a monotheist, the Rambam posited that the ideal state, based on Chumash, that the ideal state of man is to be a monotheist. And in the, in the halacha, which I did not provide here, he describes how initially man believed, Adam believed in one God, and so on, and then the, uh, the first mistake was made in the days of Enosh, when... Um, Basically, they, uh, people, deci uh, people decided 
that um, since the heavenly bodies were um, our, our gods, uh, our gods, um, our gods, our gods of creations, we should actually not only honor them but also adore them, and that actually is the way of um, is a way of, uh, of, uh, of of praising God. This was a fundamental mistake because it it shifted the, um, the one's attention from God to include um, to include. Um, to include the celestial bodies, and as uh, and that is the fund. And the Rambam says that's ikaravodazara, is including something else, adoring something else as God alongside of God. Uh, here, in fact, it fits very nicely. Uh, the definition of Vodazara, which was uh, formulated a number of years ago uh, by my colleague and teacher, Rabbi Dr. David Berger, that Vodazara is to attribute divinity and to adore as God something or someone who is, who is, or which is, in fact, not God. Okay, that's the basic, uh, um, that's the basic uh, uh, upshot of the, um, of the first halacha. The second halacha shifts things and describes a process of well-intentioned, though misguided, deterioration in the, uh, in this, in the uh, behavior of, uh, of, uh, of Jews, uh, of Jews, of the world, rather. And he writes as follows. I have allowed, I've, I've provided English translations as much as possible for those who, uh, who might have trouble with the, with the Hebrew. <laughs> Basically came false prophets and spoke in the name of God that God wants the worship of these celestial beings who are his representatives to be established, to be regularized, to be uh, ritualized. And so, and so instead of sort of spontaneous religious adoration of the stars, now we have organized religion, albeit under the guise of the, under the aegis of the one God creator of heaven and universe, but now there's competition. There are other things which are going to take, uh, take, up, Amer uh, take up the human, uh, humankind. Stage number two, says the Rambam, is that after a while, God gets lost. God gets lost, and, um, and what happens is, is false prophets come, and they prophesy not in the name of God, but in the name of the stars themselves, in the names of the idols themselves, and shift the emphasis totally to the worship of the um, divine minions in the, uh, in the heavens. So we have A, mistake number one is including the uh, stars and the celestial beings in the worship of God. Stage two, the establishment of a religion or a sub-religion devoted not only to God, but also to these celestial beings. And stage three, God gets lost and the emphasis comes in, uh, in, in, in terms of uh, just, the, um, uh, just worshiping the, uh, the stars and the, uh, and the sun and, and so on and so forth. The Rambam then goes on and he says, So what happened was it spread around the world and the, um, and the, and the people would, would worship the uh, various forms of the shapes of the, uh, of the, of the, of the stars and the, and the various celestial beings in various odd and, uh, and different uh, modes of, uh, of worship and to, uh, and to uh, offer up sacrifices to them and to bow down to them. The Kevan, let's see what the part that I put in uh, bold. The Kevan Sha'archu Hayomim, as time went on, nishtakeach or nishtakach, Hashem hanichbad v'hanora mipi kol hayakum umidaatam. God Himself, the the um, honored and awesome name of God, was forgotten from all of creation, from all of mankind. Velohi kiruhu, and they didn't know who that was. We're going to come back to this. V'nimtsu kol ameyaretz v'anoshim v'aktanim. All right. 
the, the Rambam, it, it fits for the 12th century. Enam yodim ela atzura shel eitz. People only know their, their idols and, and the various uh, religion that was developed adoring the, uh, adoring the various uh, uh, things and so on. And then he goes on, the world continued. There were here and there people that knew the truth. Noah, Methuselah, and so on. But the world went pell-mell. Here's another uh, famous phrase, willy-nilly, into a uh, tailspin, into, a, into a, uh, some sort of, a, of, a, of, of an intellectual and, 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 and religious tailspin, running pell-mell into the abyss, until what happened? Achenolad amudo shel olam v'hu avramavin. Until the pillar of the universe, who stopped, he put on the brakes, avramavin. That's the story that the Rambam um, that the Rambam uh, the Rambam tells us. First, spontaneous adoration. Second of all, Nevi'im who speak in the name of God and and say worship of Odazara. Then Nevi'im who speak in the name of Odazara and say worship of Odazara. And then the world goes into a tailspin until Avraham Avinu. There's a lot. There's a lot to say about this. I just want to focus on one thing. What? I want to focus in on the question of why did Maimonides write that the honored and revered name of God, Hashem HaNichbad Vahanorah, was forgotten? Why didn't he simply write that God was forgotten or the name of God was forgotten? Why Hashem HaNichbad Vahanorah? Why these two why these two statements? Now, when we talk about Hashem HaNichbad Vahanorah, we're not just talking about the name of God. We're talking about God in his essence. Um, the Rambam's phrase here derives from a posak in Devarim, Kavchet um, Nudchet. Please excuse the fact I'm going to run back and forth to Ashkesfar. That, that I can't, you know, that's the way it is. You, be, you, know, you know, we all know here that we become illiterate in two languages, and it happens when it comes to pronunciation, uh, pronunciation as well. Torah says, "Im lo tishmor laasos is called divrei Torah hazos haksuvim b'sefer hazeh liyirat Hashem hanichvad v'anora hazeh es Hashem elokecha." Hashem hanichvad v'anora is identical with Hashem elokecha. So, what is Hashem hanichvad v'anora? What what is this? Uh, what are we what are we what are we talking about? There? Why why plug this in here? Now the Rambam uses this phrase Hashem hanichvad v'anora four separate times in the Mishnah Torah. And each time it refers to a direct, unmediated confrontation or encounter between God and man. However, the, um, the, um, the uh, ultimate moment, the first moment that he, read, he mentions this, is in fact in text number three. Now, um, listen, I, I, it's my turn to talk, so I, 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 I hope you don't mind if I... Uh, if I brag, um, in, the, in, in the tape of the shear, I mean, I'll never forget this. In the tape of the shear, you can hear this around uh, after 20 minutes or so, I guess, something like that. Um, in the shear, um, at that point, I had a lot of moxie, and I sat really uh, right up front um, when the Rav taught this, uh, this, uh, this Rambam. And he got up and he said, so wh where else do you find the words hanichbad Hashem hanichbad vanora? And everybody's, you know, Nobody's going to say anything. Happened to be the week before the Rabbi Shapiro had actually taught it in class, so I knew the answer. So if you listen to the tape, uh, I, the, the, the Rabbi says, correct, that's me. You can't hear me, <laughs> but he says, correct, that was me. That was, that was I, sorry. In any event, the Rambam here is, the Rambam on several occasions actually has internal footnotes within the Mishnah Torah, and he's referring to the, um, and he refers here to the, um, directly, no question, to his discussion at the beginning of Hilchus Yisodia Torah, which is a passage which the Rav loved and came back to many, many times in the course of his, um, in the course of his shurim, in the course of his writings. Hakel hanichbad vanora hazeh mitzvah la'avo uliyira'oso. The Rambam takes two separate mitzvahs, okay, Avas Hashem and Yiras Hashem, and puts them together in the same paragraph. All right, we'll see in a second that he does it on purpose, but it's a revolutionary moment. Then he describes in Aloha Beis, how does that work? 
How do you achieve this combination, this given combination of love and fear, or love and awe? You look at the world and you're amazed. You look at the world and you're stunned and you want to know more about God. And you're drawn to know him first intellectually and simultaneously uh, spiritually. We'll come back to that in a second. However, Immediately though you say, who, who am I? You're blown away by the majesty, by the grandeur of God, which is far beyond anything you are, and you take a step back. Rav Soloveitchik here, okay, uh, well, we'll come back to the Rav in a second. First of all, the Rambam he presents